But that's that's the confusion. When I talk about intuitive, even people, some people get mad. What do you mean intuitive? Like you have to track and do all that stuff because nobody knows, yeah. you know, you know, no, it's not instinct, obviously. Our intuition is based off of our limited knowledge and experience and awareness. So if you expand your knowledge, expand your awareness, expand all those things and work on them, that's what intuitive eating really is. But it's not, we're not animals that we are born and instinctually we know how to eat in a balanced way. It doesn't work that way. Oh, another big giveaway. I'm going to do the super bundle again. Yep, I know. Sounds like I lost my mind, but here's why. It's because we have a huge sale going on. More about that later. Here's the super bundle. It's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, and uh, what's the other pro MAPS Anywhere. There you go. Five MAPS programs all in the super bundle. You can get them free. You got to do this though. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to the super bundle. All right. What's the sale? You're not going to believe this, but it's 50% off everything. All MAPS programs. Every single individual MAPS program is 50% off right now. You have one day left for this promotion. It ends June 1st. Here's the code MD2022. Again, it's MD2022. And you can find all the programs at mapsfitnessproducts.com. All right, here comes the show. Intuitive eating is not instinctive eating. Don't confuse the two. You know, you know why I bring that up? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Because the proponents or the, the opponents, I should say, of intuitive eating are always like, what is intuitive eating? Like people don't intuitively know what they, you know what to eat or whatever. It's like, okay, you're confusing that with instinct. Yeah. Yes, we don't instinctively just, you know, know how to eat healthy or whatever. Building intuition in the way that we talk about with intuitive eating really involves a process of learning mm -hmm. how to read your body, learning what's in food, learning the total values of food and how your cravings happen and what's causing cravings and why you eat the way you do type of deal. And through that process, you develop this, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, intuition with food in the sense that you eat in a more balanced way. So sometimes eating a slice of pizza is healthy because at the moment you're feeding uh, other things besides your physical health, like maybe you're connecting with your friends or you just want to enjoy the evening with your wife. But most of the time you probably eat in a way that feeds your physical body in a healthy way. But the balance happens there. But you have to be properly informed and work through the process before you can get there. It's yeah. not instinctive. You it's need like the you can, education first to yes. be able to base that off of. Otherwise, you may just be tricking yourself and it's all cravings that you're really like seeking out. Exactly. It's In other like, words, if your instincts suck, you have no business doing this. Yeah, well, basically. Basically. Otherwise, it's yeah, okay. If you're, you're, if you're doing intuitive eating and you don't understand, um, you know, what foods contain proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, right? You don't understand how foods affect you um, entirely, like how it affects your moods and your energy, not just fat loss or weight gain or uh, any of that stuff. How it if how your cravings get triggered? Uh, do I tend to eat when I'm depressed or sad, or how do I use food in ways that maybe doesn't serve me? Like if you don't know any of that, you don't do that work. Well, yeah. Now intuitive eating is based off of what you know about food, which most people what do they know about food? What tastes good? What's convenient? And that's it. And you end up with the problem that we well, have. Well, it's now. a great place to end up. Like it's sort of the pinnacle of all of uh, the knowledge that you're going to acquire going through the laborious process of of paying attention, like reading labels, uh, you know, tracking calories, understanding macronutrients and like all of that work, uh, will, will lead into eventually not needing to, uh, be as like completely attention to detail, uh, unless you have very specific goals, which again, this is something you always want to go back to and refer yes. uh, to that I, uh, education. I really don't think most people belong here, at least not yet. No. Like, um, I mean, I like to think uh, 20 years of doing this, um, I'd like to think I'm, I'm a black belt in nutrition, right? As far as, especially if with my own body. Um, Compared but I, to the average person you are. Right. I, I like to think that. Um, but I find it necessary that I even revisit tracking and weighing and measuring and getting back to that every once in a while just to kind of recalibrate. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing that you have to keep in mind. Okay, so say you like you've you've figured out all these different signals and you've learned about your body and you've tracked long enough. You know what macros are. Like you you you're at a place where you you are black belt, so you believe that I'm ready for intuitive eating. Uh, but then your job changes, you know, or you've aged quite a bit, or 
your training is different. You're no longer training seven days a week. You're training more like a father or your goals are different. Um, it, once you start changing all those major variables, you kind of have to go back and recalibrate again. A little bit, right? But what sticks with you is, you know what tends to make you feel good, what tends to make you feel bad, how you, um, how you use food to medicate, for example. A lot of people are not aware that they use food in ways to medicate or distract. Um, you see lots of people do the whole diet and then binge model afterwards. Like, why does that happen? And people, oh, I just, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm so hungry, right? Not understanding cravings, for example. <coughs> and the problem is, is that, you know, when you're, you grow up in these wealthy societies, you learn to value food really for a couple different things. Like how good does it taste? Mm -hmm. And how convenient is it? I mean, you ask anybody, you know, when you're with your friends and you say, hey, what are we gonna get for lunch? What are you thinking about? What's gonna taste good? What sounds the most fun? Right. Pe most people don't even know what real hunger feels like because they've never gone for more than a day without food. And so what they think hunger is, is cravings. And so yes, from that standpoint, intuitive eating would never work because intuitive eating is what people do all the time in America and it's making people it's not working. super obese. But if you want to develop a, a sense of balance to where you can enjoy the occasional glass of wine or the occasional dessert, but for the most part, you eat in a way that's maybe you know considered classically healthy, but you feel yeah. good about it. It's what you want to do. You don't feel like you're restricting. You don't feel like you're uh, oppressing yourself. Uh, you're not doing it from a self-hate uh, position. Well, that's, that's what intuitive eating basically means. It's a stress-free it's a balanced way of living. And yeah, you're not going to- Flexible eating. And now you're not going to get 4% body fat with that. You're not going to become a top level, you know, bodybuilder or performance athlete with that. When you get to that level, in, you know, being balanced isn't, doesn't work. Being 4% body fat is not balanced. No. Uh -uh. At that point, you got to get a little crazy and follow the numbers and ignore the fact that you're probably not doing things that are healthy, right? Like, like eating too few calories or working out quite a bit. But that's that's the confusion. When I talk about intuitive, even people, some people get mad. What do you mean intuitive? Like you have to track and do all that stuff because nobody knows. Yeah. You know, you know, no, it's not instinct. Obviously, our intuition is based off of our limited knowledge and experience and awareness. So if you expand your knowledge, expand your awareness, expand all those things and work on them, then you develop something that's more balanced. To the point where, look, I'll give you guys an example. I never liked vegetables. Never as a kid. It was most kids don't like vegetables. I hated them. They weren't great. But through this process, I identified that well cooked vegetables really <coughs> were beneficial for my gut health. I've, I've on and off dealt with gut health issues for a long time, and I identified like, man, this really helps my gut health. And what happened through this process is that when my gut is off, what I crave is vegetables. I literally crave well cooked vegetables. Now that doesn't mean they taste as good as pizza but I enjoy eating them just the same because I understand the, the true values. So that's what that, that's what intuitive eating or, or the way we talk about it, at least that's what it uh, means. A similar experience. I mean, you have to build those associations that this is good for me in a different way than these other foods I naturally tend to gravitate yes. towards. So I have to go outside my comfort zone because I know that this is helping my body become more healthy and, and therefore, you know, I'm putting a different association to it as I go to eat it, which then, eventually kind of train yourself and your palate to uh, you know, enjoy that because you know the benefits from it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting dance for somebody who is, who's kind of just getting started on their journey. Of course. And they, they have no idea. Right. And they, and they see the obsessive fitness person who is weighing and tracking and, do, you know, and they're like, I don't want that. No. You know? And so, so this, this intuitive eating thing sounds so much more like where I want to be. But the truth is you come in and you say you want to lose 30 pounds or whatever. Um, I, I don't I come from a camp or a belief that ideally I want to I want this person to track way and measure on on our way to their goal. Of course. And and during that process, I want to help them make those associations that Justin was saying, like not just, oh, the scale's going down, but how did you feel when we ate this way yesterday? Did you notice that your your digestion was better? Did you notice your stool was better? That's you, the awareness part, right? Right. Did you notice did you notice your energy level and and while we're we're tracking and we're being consistent as a coach, I'm asking these questions to help them make that connection so that now when they reach their goal, I can remind them, okay, now we're going to remove these, you know, scales and trackers and and get away from that. And let's try and really listen to your body. And because we've done that journey of being very diligent about what we're consuming and paying attention to it and being consistent to get to your goal, that person I feel is better prepared than somebody who comes in and says, I want to lose three pounds, but I don't want to be like those fitness people that 
count and track and stuff like that. Well, it's like saying this. It's like saying I've never played basketball before, but I want to. Uh, I want to know how to do a layup, and I know I want to know the positions of the players, and I want to know how to move in a particular way if I grab the ball. Okay, well, first you're gonna have to learn step by step basics, right? Like uh, we, you know, you guys played sports. I did martial arts. Like I remember learning judo as a kid. I had to think about everything I had to do. I had to think about my foot position and the, and the coach would get behind me and, no, your foot goes here. Turn your foot that way. Move your hips this way. This is where they're off balance. And for the first year, it was just like yeah. awkward. I had to think about it. Eventually, though, it became intuitive. Eventually, I sensed their balance. I sensed when a particular throw would work. And this is, I mean, athletes will tell us all the time. Like you, you, you take a baseball player and they, the ball's coming at them. They instinctively <clears throat> right, or intuitively know how to jump and move to catch the ball. Well, that's not going to happen right out the gates. Right out the gates, you have to learn yeah. the step-by-step -step basics. All the steps, the mechanics, the, the way that you hold your body position. But then it's the reps. Yes. It's the continual reps that then eventually embeds itself in your subconscious. So that way, uh, you've done it enough times where it's like you, you can actually start to navigate uh, and make those good decisions because you've put all of those reps in to where it's like it's something that's just like part of your formula. 100%. And it becomes more stress-free. And, you know, this is when you hear people say things like, yeah, I stopped that diet because I just want to enjoy my life. <coughs> Which, you know, very strange thing to say, right? Or hear uh, come from someone who's uh, in the fitness space. It's like, you stopped eating right so you can enjoy your life. Like, that's weird. Because I know how much proper nutrition, and all the data will back me up, how much that improves the quality of your life in, in its entirety. Why was it that you felt the need to stop to improve the quality of your life? Well, you're in a, you were in, it was a stressful situation for you. You were restricting, you were, this wasn't a natural way to be. Um, so that's what intuitive eating really is, but it's not, we're not animals that we are born and instinctually we know how to eat in a balanced way. It doesn't work that way. In fact, we've learned how to do it the wrong way for so long that this is a bit of a work, a bit of a process. This is this conversation's reminded me of I finished last night I finished the uh, Ricky Gervais uh stand up. Oh man. And his, his He went hard, dude. Oh god, he went so hard. So good though. It was, it was so it was good. Vicious. Yeah, he did the the obese one was was rough, dude. Like he went after it for a minute. And I thought, oh my God, he's gonna offend so many people for this. So I can't, it's only been Even out, what, the now, jugular 24 like, hours or whatever right now. So, I mean, as of the airing of this, it's probably been two or three days, right? But I can't wait to see if there's, there's backlash. I think you said it um, that, you know, when Netflix came out with that statement like a couple weeks ago. It was in preparation for it, him. It was totally in preparation for that. I mean, as he's doing his thing, there must have been at least five or six different skits where he's like, well, this ain't going to make the special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, can I, can, I tell, can I just, I, I think I've said this before, but I want to just really hammer it, like why I respect and value comedians so much. People don't realize this, but it's true. Comedians do more for our free speech, our right for free speech than almost, than anybody else. They do it more than the media, definitely. They do it more than, uh, than politicians yeah, for sure. Yeah. They, and why? Because first off, they push the limit. But second, and this is what's brilliant about comedy, because it's, it's covered in, in humor and it makes people laugh. Uh, they can get away with it. Like if Ricky Gervais was up there making statements, yeah, right. It, it would yeah, be like, like lecturing much harder push. people. Yeah. No, nobody would really receive that well. Yeah. We need comedians so yeah. bad. And there was that, what was that old saying? Like the, if um, you know, the King has gone mad if he kills the gesture, mm -hmm. like that's when he's gone crazy. When the, when, the, <clears throat> when they start to kill the, the, the funny gesture. Right. Yeah. So I, I appreciate. Well, it like honestly it. felt like, <laughs> Let's say we get in a time machine, we go like five, 10 years back, like uh, probably 10 years at this point, uh, based on where our culture is today. But just to sit and listen, it was like, it really felt like it was nothing changed in his delivery of yeah. like every other special I've seen from him. And it's weird that like, you're like, oh, wow, that's really brave. Yeah. Like, it's just like who he's just been consistent. Yeah. And I know Bill Maher kind of talked about this a yeah. bit too. It's like, while everybody else changes and, and tips more to the extremes, like I've just said the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, and it, it's like, I'm not going to change my value system just because the world's changing. Well, yeah. it, it, I get excited when I see it because um, there was a, just not that long ago where even the comedians, I felt I like know. Weren't, weren't saying anything. So same. Yeah, I felt it, was, the same way. it was rough yeah. now that, and I really feel like, you know, Chappelle opened that door for a lot of people. Right. Definitely. Um, and now we're starting to see him. 
like more and more of these the, the stand ups that are oh, coming out. Oh, it seems like now. everyone that comes out is like they're trying to see who can go harder. Yeah. So they're starting to push it, yeah. which excites me because I feel like what we went, and I've been saying this on the podcast now for several years that, you know, I have faith in humanity that will come back. Like it'll, it'll I, balance I, its way back. Yeah. I think, I think we were due for a correction in a lot of areas. Um, and I think that we overcorrected. And we've seen that overcorrection for maybe the last five years. It's gotten a little crazy. And I now think that like, okay, when the comedians start like sit up to okay, this is getting a little ridiculous now. <laughs> so I feel like that's the beginning of like, okay, now we're gonna start. You know what I'm back. hearing from uh people in education is that this new generation of kids coming up, I think you might have even said this too, mm -hmm. Adam, uh, that they're not like the millennials were yeah, the ones after they're that. They're more like us. They're yeah. rebelling against that. And that's the great, that's, time. A, that's the cool thing about teenagers is they're just going to rebel against the recent thing, right? Yeah. So if the recent thing is like stupid, like, oh, cool, let the new kids come in and they'll rebel against that too. Well, just think about how overbearing and restrictive it is. Like they're, like all of that, like, of course there's going to be uh, rebellious kids that are like, don't tell me, what I have, what I can and can't say. Like yeah. that's just been the theme of teenage angst uh, forever. forever yeah, you know? know, so it's just inevitable uh, that the more that you try to really stuff and suppress speech in any direction, you're going to get backlash. Dude, speaking of like, you know, when you're talking about, I was thinking about when I was a kid or when I was younger. So, um, I, although I was, I think I was in my twenties. How? When did the first Jackass series come out? Do you guys remember? Was that like early two thousand? Feel like it was, it was after 90s. high school for me. So it was yeah. after yeah, high school, yeah. late nineties or or yeah, two thousand. No, it was two thousand. So we were like in our twenties, early twenties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I fondly I have fond memories of the first Jackass. You know, the series when it was on MTV and then the uh, movies. Yeah. I just watched four point five. I know you brought this back. <laughs> yeah, bro, those guys. What'd you think? That's that's a there's a lot of lot of lot of dick stuff. I told and you, butthole dude. stuff. Like they they did they open it up by doing a a hot sauce enema. Yeah, yeah, with a bunch of guys. Yeah, they just pour hot sauce like directly. <coughs> and the funny thing is, is like they don't have like nurses like put. They're doing it to each other. Yeah, like that's a little too far, buddy. Oh, that's man. a little too far. Yeah, but yeah. it was uh, it was it was it I was funny. It was watching these old guys do this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah. man, I part of me respects them. Part of me is like, dude, you guys, you guys need to. Stop. So that was four point five. So that's like the extended like scenes. So that, I think that's different than. Oh, really? Because I watched the movie. It was like Jackass Four or whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, it was on so, Netflix. Yeah, I, th I haven't actually watched that one yet, but um, the they opened it up with um, like Godzilla, Chris Pontius. Yeah, we had the, like, the Godzilla. He just turned his dick into Godzilla. Oh my it god! Was, like smashing buildings and things. Like, what? yeah, you didn't <laughs> it was see that? so crazy. No, so you, no, it didn't open this. So yeah, this that's how it different. opened. The opening yeah. is what what I saw. The opening is what Justin said. Is like the first like five ten minutes is literally like a Godzilla dick. <laughs> You like just see him laying minutes. like this, and then they put like they a hole his, right here. They painted his put, dick and balls green. Yeah, they just they just put like his whole city on top of him. And they and they like, puppet Rrr. master it, right? They got yeah. strings to it, uh, so it's like Doug's hating this right now. <laughs> hey, Doug, this it's just hey, it's a I, movie. I, I, well, Doug, I'm with you. I, you know, ability. I've never, I was never a big jackass fan. Really? I, I, yeah, I watched it even all. Even in your early twenties? Yeah, even it's just I don't know. I mean, okay. As a as a kid in high school, uh, that was it was popular to do the crazy stuff. I think we've talked off air before about all the thing eating ants and guys would do you know eat horse shit and do weird stuff. Like, I mean, that was there was always someone some, ate horse shit. Yeah, a guy put it in a, someone. I think it gave him fifty bucks like to do it. <laughs> he put That's it. In a, low. He put it in like a jack in the box biscuit, dude. No, he oh. did it, dude. Just. So Ew. legend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Any, a buddy of mine. Right. So there was, oh I, I was never that guy who I, I was just me neither. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. do it. I, I, I thought I don't want to be cool that bad. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was crazy to watch people do it. So it, I, I wasn't drawn to it though. It was like, whatever. So when J the jackass thing came around, um, I mean, it, it hooked me enough to watch it, but I just, I, I, I don't get off. No, like I used that. to die laughing. Uh, but you know, which one used to kill me. Remember yeah. when they, they hooked up the massive, <laughs> it looked like a big hand. But like if it hit yeah. you, it would like knock you out. Yeah. And there was like <coughs> people would come around the wall, just coming to work. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Boom! And it would knock. Smack. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah. yeah. There was that one guy. I don't know what his name is, but he's the missing tooth. And in the version that I watched, they're interviewing them oh, yeah. also. Uh -huh. And he's like, I guess they did a scene in one of the previous Jackasses where they were all in a room. <clears throat> they shut the lights off, so it's pitch black. Oh, yeah. The rest That's of in the, the movie. The yeah. rest of the guys come in there wearing <laughs> night vision goggles, yeah. so they couldn't see them. Yeah, and they just get the shit beat out of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like thirty minutes long in yeah. the dark, and he couldn't escape. And he said, "I literally got." He goes, "I actually got PTSD from that." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh I guarantee God. all of them have had a form of it. Well, like, remember they had the uh, they had the snake too in there. 
Yeah. So remember, right before That's they why. do the lights out, they they showed them the big old snake they got in, in the basket, and then they knocked the basket over. Yeah. And they turned the lights yeah, out. And then they turned the lights. And then on. they had like stuffed animal snakes where they would be like, yeah, throwing it on them. Throwing and stuff. It. And so yeah. yeah. So they just can I tell you? The, them. This is the reason why I never got into prank wars with my friends because I know what happens. They don't end. Yeah. And then the rest of the school year. You're looking over Just your shoulder. Oh yeah, you're looking over your shoulder. You're like, what? Okay, what's going to happen next? It, yeah. you know, those always ended in a fight. Like that, that happened at my school all the time. Like yeah. that, we would get someone into just that. went too far. Yeah, someone would go too far and then like destroy property or something. I, I mean, I got into a fight over one time. I remember the guys thought it would be funny, and I was. This is when I had just got my car, and I was parking it, and someone thought it'd be cool to shoot paintballs at it. At your at your car? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Oh, so that's not funny. Yeah, dude, that's, that's terrible. It's not funny, bro. Yeah. What I did was funny. That's not funny. Oh, you know dude, I had. So it always it always ends like that. Like you ever so a couple of good funny ones back and forth, and then someone decides to do something. Just a mean a, dumb thing. Yeah, yeah. just you know. Oh no, when I the one that that uh, where, where it stopped because I stopped it, but uh, it was a wedgie war. So I don't know how it started, but it started at the beginning of the year. So this ended up going all year. Yeah. Where randomly you get behind your buddy and you'd give him a hard <clears throat> wedgie. Yeah. Well, I wasn't in it. I told everybody, I'm not playing. I don't want to play. It's so stupid. Don't do this to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm warning everybody. Well, anyway, sure enough, halfway through the school year, my buddy gives me it like a gnarly wedgie. Yeah. So I, I literally waited. I'm like, I'm going to wait like a month. So he doesn't. <laughs> and I, I, and remember I was working out since I was 14. So this is like senior year. So I'm like 18. I'm, I'm relatively strong at this point. Yeah. And I clean and pressed his, him by his underwear. I literally <laughs> clean and pressed and he fell forward. Uh, underwear's ripped off. Yes. So I had his underwear in my hand. I did that, that to my brother. That was it. It was over. He had those tidy whities and they covered wagoned him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Right on his wow. Head. Yeah. That's yeah. Terrible, See, I bro. feel like that's you guys are a little bit older because what was popular when I was a kid was pantsing. Pantsing was way more popular. We did that too. Uh, yeah. yeah. But that, that, would, that would get you in a fight for sure because that's like, well, come on, man. You're yeah. expose me. You can't do that anymore, of course. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. They see that all the time. I mean, it was the best if if you're in front of a bunch of girls and you get your buddy, you know, and leave them. Bro, there. that'll get you arrested well, now. It was I the know, same. Right? It was also popular to be go commando when we were in school at that same yeah, time. Yeah, so if you pants someone yeah, like commando. So, so, yeah, so that was super popular. I know. If you did then. that now, you probably would go to jail, I <laughs> think, you, right? Would you go to, you definitely be I don't suspended. know. Yeah, you expelled. If you pants, if a kid pants another, his friend today, and you went full naked in front of a bunch of girls. Mm -hmm. They expelled? would get expelled. Really? Well, yeah, that's sexual I, harassment. I can see that. Yeah, you can't do that, dude. Wow. I know, man. Hey, did you see what Times happened with the, the Elon Musk sexual harassment thing? Oh, yeah. that I was, was a, a, you know, so I don't know too much about it. I know that they settled for <clears throat> a quarter million dollars. Yeah, I saw that. And the case, basically, it's like, look, uh, when, when people come after large corporations or billionaires, oftentimes to save money and time, there's like, settle. Mm -hmm. Here's the money. So that's what he was saying. Now, he said something interesting, though. He said, if he's denied, he's like, this is baloney. And he goes, if this really happened, then tell me a distinctive, like, oh, like uh, describe, like, some, like, like super like, characteristic. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Apparently, I don't know if he has a birthmark or something. Oh, wow. But he said, well, then, then let's see if you can describe something about me that only you would know, yeah, which I thought was brilliant. That's a really smart. If there is I mean, there. I mean, even if there wasn't, that's a brilliant play. <laughs> that's a brilliant play. If you have, if you have this an average looking dick, yeah. and you He's like, say it's really like, weird. Oh yeah, uh, you saw it, huh? Yeah. Well, tell me what's different no. about it, <laughs> huh, no. Justin? Yeah. Tell me what's different oh about my, my dick. Yeah. Huh? It's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. It's ball, it's balls balls first. Top. Balls yeah. first. <laughs> They call them, they, yeah. they call them top yeah. balls. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right, Doug. All right, Doug. Move on. All right, I'll move on. I'll move on to a light subject. Uh, let's talk about monkeypox. <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't even where know. Where does this thing. come from? Hey, I didn't even know that was a thing until it's I. It's not a thing. There's like a oh, there's not, like a hundred and something people in the world with it, right? Like that. You've got uh, they've seen it, so it's not like this big thing. And uh oh. Uh, it spreads through. Sounds like an elementary school I, I, jingle I, I, or something. I got. I, I, I saw uh, Vicky. Vicky some, does some posts sometimes that are off the chain. She she did one that said. I'm just going to come out and say it early that I'm against the jab for the monkey, the monkey pox vaccine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's um, it's it's like a, I don't know, 100 and something people, so it's not like it's this crazy thing, and it's not super virulent. I, I think you have to have close contact. And I read an article that said that they think it started in two raves in Europe. So I guess there was a couple raves, <laughs> and some dudes naturally, <laughs> some dudes got it from each other or whatever. Oh, okay. But it's not, I mean, from what I've read, it's not a super deadly disease. It kind of sucks. Obviously, it looks bad. I don't well, know if you've seen Yeah, what pictures. does it look like? Is it, I mean, you get like rash lumps you all get over. Big ass, big ass pox, dude. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look good at all. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't, you don't want no monkey good. pox. No. Although, 
at least you know when someone has it, if they have it like that, right? It's all visible. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. at the end. I think that's at the, at the end of the virus. You get that. <clears throat> but it, it is funny how the fear gets stirred up now so yeah. quickly with like viruses and stuff. Because it's that. beginning, like if you Google monkeypox, there's like tons of mainstream articles. Wow. Like, and there's only that many cases? Maybe Doug can look up how many total cases, but it was like a hundred something, you know, in the world. That's what it looks like. Ooh. Yeah. yeah you, don't, you don't Ouch. want that. Ooh. You don't want a bunch of monkeypox. Well, yeah. What, what are the case, what, what's the case count at? Doug? Yeah. Look up total monkey, like monkeypox. Yeah. Okay, he looked up images. But yeah. What, Sal, where are we at with, uh, with, COVID. I mean, we're we're still seeing. Uh, that's that's so that's so last year. I well, <laughs> I thought so, but I I heard there's we're it's spiking again. Is yeah, that, there's there's cases. That yeah, it's it's up. um it's endemic, so it's yeah. up and down. Um, it's not nearly as deadly as it was. Yeah, what do you got for me, Doug? So as of yesterday, ninety confirmed cases. Oh my tw- god, twenty eight suspected ones. 90? Okay, so a grand total that's of one hundred and eighteen total. Get cases. Out of here with the fear. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, hilarious. Well, that's it's not crazy. hilarious. It's like. It's unfortunate for those 98 people, but that's yeah, good. I don't want no monkey pox. Yeah, that's, that's crazy though. I, I I didn't even know it was a thing. And then I made that post about me being in the airport and being sick. Well, so this is, there's also this like, you know, this whole conspiracy thing, right? So who is it? The world health organization that, that I think it was them that either them or the world economic forum. One of the ones that everybody talks about yeah, with it was WHO. They, they, they came out and, and they were going to talk about uh potential monkey pox outbreaks before anything happened. Like, how would we handle it? We have vaccines. And then, and so then the, the the conspiracy theory is that they, they'll they tell you what's going to happen. They're doing like a dry run or, or something. Yeah, that of like was planning it all out before. Yeah, I know. Because oh, so now we see it. Well, because before COVID, there was this whole like, uh, I guess, convention and stuff. And they said, oh, a potential. What if a coronavirus came out and could cause all these problems? And then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. So now they're like, you're going to do this again. They're going to talk about a virus. And yeah. It's going to happen. Sort of prepping us all. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about the pox. <laughs> no. Anyway, more good news. Did you guys hear about Hyundai? Um, they're doing a recall on a bunch of cars, like twenty two thousand. What cars. happened? This sucks. I guess some of the seatbelts explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little problematic. Yeah. So in a, on a car accident, I guess part of the seatbelt. I don't know if it, where oh, it attached it explodes, the and then shrapnel. Wow. Yeah. So shrapnel from it comes out and, and can hurt people. So I don't know. I think it's like twenty two thousand or something like that. No, two hundred and thirty nine thousand. Oh, even more. Two hundred thirty nine thousand. Dang. From this. Particular- how does that make its way? Did you it? guys know how recalls are calculated? By the way, Mm-mm. what do you mean by like as far as like? So they have so the car these car manufacturers have departments where they do these risk assessments. Yeah. And what they look at is okay, the cost of the recall. Yeah. Compare that to the cost of the potential lawsuits or the cost of the potential public outcry. Right. And then if, you know, the recall is more expensive, we're not going to do the recall. If it's less expensive, wow. then we'll do the recall. You yeah, know what I mean? Just weigh it out. That way. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, though, I mean, how else do you, how else do you decide something like that as a business? You know? I mean, ethically, you would like to think that they always like are worried about the, but there's always going to be a, a safety issue, right? Yep. Like no, no That's car true. is a hundred percent safe in every single accident. So there is always some sort of a risk somewhere in the, mm-hmm. the design of the vehicle. Mm. And so it's just risk, risk assessment or risk management, right? So it's yeah. just, there's no other re- way you actually probably would do that. It just sounds really bad when you say that, right? Oh, like yeah. when you say it like that, it's just like, well, you know, we'll only kill about probably, I don't know, 150 people, mm. which is down from last year. Yeah. Well, how so many? We'll go ahead many, and roll with it. <laughs> you don't say yeah. that sounds horrible. <laughs> how many car brand, brands have like imploded because of this? Because like, I, I want to think that, uh, was it Corvair or one of those old car brands that like the engine was in the back and then would any, anytime somebody would slam into it, like it would explode. You know, that was, a, that was, I think it was the Pinto mm-hmm. that was the problem, but you know, that was a myth. It was a myth. Really? It didn't actually, they didn't, didn't actually. Explode. I, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I've watched myth busters and yeah. like, yeah, the engines don't really explode. No, like in movies, whenever yeah, they shoot a gun no, at it. You know what else doesn't happen? What I learned from myth busters. You what? cannot throw a cigarette and gasoline and blow up anything. It yeah. just, does it catch fire? It just goes, it goes out, puts the cigarette out. The yeah. liquid puts the cigarette out. You can go test that? I No, I, I have. No, you have what? Yeah, of course. No, what did you do? You watched MythBusters and you tested it? Yeah, no, we absolutely have done it. It's totally, it totally does not work. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold I on didn't a do it at a Back gas station a to blow something up. All you have to do is be on a bonfire, have some gasoline on it, and then throw a, a throw a cigarette on it, and it won't do it. Or a really? Joint. Yeah, no. you've done that. Yeah, well, it doesn't do I'd anything. Be too, I'd be too scared to do that. <laughs> no, I mean it's on a bonfire. It's not like it's. We're gonna light it anyways. Trying to light it with. So in a, the movies, whenever so there's gas, throw it, and if it's still liquid, it just puts it out. Yeah. 
What? Wow. Yeah, it does not light it. So you need because you, you need a flame. flame. You need blown. an actual flame. The 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 charcoal from the the cigarette will not ignite. Oh wow! The, yeah, because it's the actual gases from the gas that ignites. It's not yeah. the liquid itself. Right. So the the cigarette butt hitting hitting the liquid puts the puts the coal out. So you need a flame to ignite the fumes that are coming off from the gas to actually oh, ignite the gas. Weird. weird. Don't but in try movies, home, I mean, they please. still do yeah, it. It's still, still blow it they up. still do it today, which all cracks me up that that's been out and they've, they've busted that a long time ago, but yet you still will see a new movie come out. The guy will walk away really slow. You know, dude, yeah. I had a buddy whose dad <laughs> was, was in the military. Okay. And he, I used to hate watching like, like war movies or anything like that with him because he would always call out everything in there that was stupid. So like, <laughs> yeah, and like Predator, like he's got the rock, you know, the grenade launcher and he's like, grenades don't explode like that. You know, yeah. like, that's not how it works. It's not that big. Of a, you, know, you know, you watch movies like Rambo yeah. where he throws a grenade in a building and blows up the whole building. He's like, no, it doesn't do that. That's funny because I was thinking about that because I was going to... Um, Top Gun, huh? Yeah. And you talked to all the pilots I talked still? to the pilots, yeah. <laughs> don't let them ruin it for you, bro. The Thunderbird pilots, you know, and, and apparently they liked it. This is entertaining, but of course it's like, not even close to being realistic and I'm like, yeah, it's Hollywood, you know, like they're going to do like stunts that you just, you wouldn't do, or like they're going to add CGI to, to things to kind of really enhance it. But I mean, from what it looked like, I, I think that there was a lot of time that the actors had to spend at least in the cockpit. And then they had like cameras on the inside. And so a lot of the perspective is like, as much of the audience feels like they're in the cockpit this time than just being, kind of a cheesy uh, model, like one on top of the other. I mean, considering how old Top Gun is, I actually thought they did a, I rewatched it the other day. And normally when you watch a movie like in the 80s. You watched it again. I did, dude. Dude, it's a great movie, dude. It's a great yeah, movie. I was never a fan. I'm excited about Man. Really? Nah, I'm never a big fan. Uh, I'm the, not ro- a huge... the romance part, maybe? Huh? You're not a big fan of the romance no, part? No, what is it? It's not, it's, I mean, it's no Rocky. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't put dude, it in that category. Dude, it's the best romance uh, movie of all time. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Top, Gun is a, a, Top Gun is a better romance don't movie do than wow. Rocky. Don't do that. Let's yeah. start this debate. Yeah, no, it's, it's, not even close. Oh, my God, it is, dude. What are you talking about? so much. Oh, the whole story behind Rocky is him getting they with sing in a bar for her, the- bro. That's way better, dude. Oh my God, dude. Yes, dude. Listen, <laughs> Rocky. I think did Top Gun win any awards? No, of course I have no idea. idea. The damn thing. Did. Actually, it probably did pull it up. Top Gun yeah. had to win probably awards. Special though. effects or something. It won Come on, it won the hearts I mean, of the my world. Point of, my point of bringing it up. <laughs> my, <laughs> my point of bringing it up is a movie that that requires like special effects, like you know, you know, fighter pilots and crazy shit like that like yeah. you know that 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 obviously they couldn't do a lot of the things that they pretended to do in that movie it's when you look back on a movie that's 20 years old and you watch it, you're like oh my god so like uh, you, yeah it's so but it's not it's yeah. like they did a pretty good job did like, you know that military yeah, up. that movies that depict like military weapons or whatever you can get, get funding right Grants? you can get funding yeah from the U.S. government, they have to approve obviously what you're doing because it serves as sure a promotion, propaganda. Did, yeah, of course. Did Ramba get? Uh, I, d- I doubt that it, was bro. A little extreme. Well, I mean, First Blood is a Vietnam vet that loses his shit and starts a war with the whole town. I'm pretty sure the government didn't support. <coughs> hey, that. Just, I don't did know you start? About this. Did you start watching Halo yet? I haven't started watching. I'm kind of into it. Somebody said it was good. I would like to watch. I'm it. Wait, wait, I, Halo. The, it's based off the video game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're the third person. The yeah. Third I'm, I mean, I, I heard so. I, I saw someone you, post huh? it, and I thought, uh, let me. I thought maybe it was a movie. And then I saw it was a series. I'm like, let me check it out. It's like it sucked me in. Did you play the video game? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why, right? So maybe because I played the video game a little bit. So, I, I mean, it's it's definitely sci-fi. You yeah. know. Where, so. What is, what is it on? No, I'll check it out. It is on. Is it on Amazon? Paramount? I think. What the hell's Paramount? Mm. Paramount, oh, is, Amazon. I got yeah, you could buy Paramount. it. So you could buy it individually, probably on oh, Amazon. Oh, okay. Right. So if you have Amazon, you can buy Paramount movies, mm, or yeah. if you have Paramount, you obviously get it for free. I'll watch that. Well, speaking of, um, <clears throat> so I was, uh, you know, these TV shows and whatnot. Like I was watching every now and then. I do this. I'll, I'll go and see what my kids are like watching on YouTube because, and I'll kind of come back and watch. And the biggest thing that I've noticed. It's not just like they can't just watch SpongeBob or they can't just watch like regular cartoons or shows anymore. They want to watch these like 
breakdowns and also like almost like conspiracy theories within like cartoons. <laughs> no, that's what? just your kids, bro. Dude, I, I'm like, what? <laughs> those are your kids. I, that's I, yeah, it must be like a genetic <laughs> thing. But <laughs> I'm like, I haven't ever heard anybody. Dude, like, so, so SpongeBob, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, you yeah, think well, it's a okay. sponge in the ocean? Okay, so here we go. So there's this one. So I decided to watch one because I thought this was hilarious. Uh, I didn't this guy was breaking it down. This YouTube like commentator, and he's talking about how basically so Pearl is like the the whale uh, daughter of of Mr. Krabs. And, oh right, right, right. And so the thing is, they're like, well, where does he get all the meat for the Krabby Patties? And and then he used to be like a a whaler, like a, a pirate on this ship and everything. And so the, there's this whole like dark theory kills, of like he killed like her mom or something. What? And then like <laughs> created all the meat for there. And then he's raising her to then end up you know, using those. her for a uh, uh, Krabby Patch what, later. Uh, what is that about? So there is this thing that we're drawn to, and you see it now uh, on social media platforms, YouTube, all over the place, where somebody is commentating on somebody else's content. That's like so yeah. popular. Like whether it be music, my kids or, are so into that. Stuff. Whether it be video games, whether it be yeah. car, it's like a it's like a thing to. You know, takes watch somebody else watch something and well, dissect I mean, it. how many sports shows you watch where they talk about the sports that just happened? I mean, I guess mm -hmm. that's fair. Same thing. Yeah, like you just watch the game. Now yeah. we got to watch and what's after. happening in their life, right outside of the yeah. sports event. It's like they create this whole so, narrative outside of it. So I heard a theory that <clears throat> you guys have seen Moana. Have you seen that the Disney yeah. film yeah. Uh -huh. that she actually died? In the remember the scene where she's in the ocean and it, it's like it's a storm or whatever that she actually died, and her spirit goes to the island and brings back this you know it does all the work or whatever. So the whole time you're watching the it's movie, like the half, back half of the movie she's dead. She's really. dead. Yeah. Oh. How cool would that have been at the end? Like Sixth Sense. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I was never alive. <laughs> all the kids. Oh, the freak, the freak the kids. You yeah. know, I thought who brought up the thing that was something that Disney does that I never like. Almost every Disney movie, like the kids, like an orphan. It's always some sad shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 they they hook you with like a traumatic event. The worst is up. I can't do it. The the whole scene in up yeah. where they show the the I've only seen that they're getting once, older together and everything, and they and can't then, have kids, and then yeah. she dies, and it's like, come on, man, you You're just like, ruined wow, my you're day. You're really bumming me out. Yeah. That's totally sad. Speaking of uh, <laughs> of of sad or ruining my day or crazy. Wait, before if, you leave Disney, I want to ask you something. I, so, someone asked me this, and I thought that was a really interesting question. Asked me, what's your what's your Disney classic? Your one. Oh, my favorite Disney yeah, one? Yeah, one. Give me your one. Oh, man. I know. Somebody asked me that. It made me think, right? I was like, oh, wow. Well, Doug, what about you? It's a good question. Um, I had mine canned already. So, I, like, I we were big. When we were little, we watched a lot of Disney classics. Like, I watched them. We had them all. Classic had, classics, huh? Yeah. I mean, all. Mine was the Sword in the Stone. That's mine. How oh, weird is that? Oh, wow. Mm. No shit. Yeah. That's mine. I watch out my kids all the time. My kids are the Aristocats. Bro, that's like they a 1967 that. one, too. I probably, yeah, the older ones are the best. Yeah. I probably watch Lady that's and the so Tramp. That's so crazy. You're I, I watched a lot of Lady and the yeah. Tramp when I was a kid. I see that. You're the dog. Huh? You're the dog. Where oh. we, we've already said you look like the dog. <laughs> yes. What's, what? what's it, what kind of sna it's a schnauzer? What is that, Schnauzer. Andrew? Is it a schnauzer? The gray, the gray dog? You know what sucks? What's the gray, what's the gray, what what's the gray old, that? what's the gray you old wise dog? You have a little dog? schnauzer in oh, your I'm not uh, sure. face. That's what, it's a schnauzer. It's a, is it? It's a schnauzer. It's, we've already said yeah. it. Can I tell you guys what sucks about that? Uh, <laughs> okay. You guys have never told that to Jessica. She's right. told me that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> if you were a dog, you'd be a schnauzer. What? He look, uh, pull the dog up, Doug. That is in Lady the Tramp. That is the what's the character's name? It's not the main two. It's the it's the it's the friend. Oh, I don't remember. He's gray. He's gray and he's grayish black or whatever. Man, you watched all these things, didn't you? I yeah. did. There's a Tramp well, is yeah. The Tramp is we. Uh, he's a he's Schnauzer, a, isn't he's he? A schnauzer, yeah. yeah. Oh, Peter Pan was the other one I watched a lot of. Oh, yeah, but there's yeah. an old there's an old schnauzer too, huh? Is that yeah, the it's the old one? yeah, it's the old schnauzer that I think Sal looks like. My oh, second, okay. my I don't sec even look like the, the young one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> my second was probably Robin Hood. Uh, the, the jock. Yes, yeah. yes. Jock. Mm, pull his jock. pull his picture up. I want to see what he looks like because he looks just like Sal. I think. Yeah. Did you guys ever watch Fox and the Hound? <laughs> I watched. Yeah, them all. yeah. Fox I loved and them all. Was Fox and the too. Hound was yeah, pretty good. I, I, I watched all of them for sure. Yeah. That's so crazy. You're sword in the stone, dude. That's, I know. Dude, I've that's never weird. heard anybody else say that. That's yeah. Sal. Is this yes, one? that is Sal. Super random. Come on, bro. I'm not. I don't have. I'm not short like that. He's he's got your gray. <laughs> yeah, he does have my he's gray. He's a little, yeah. little Scotty dog. Yeah, I love yeah. that dog. Yeah, I actually want to get a schnauzer. I mean, he's not an ugly dog. You know, they're adorable. Yeah, he's a cool dog. So cute. You know what I'm saying. And I think he's kind of like the like the the angry wise guy in the in the in the movie, right? I'm not angry at all, bro. <laughs> You're angry. 
I'm not angry. Quit it's telling like people that, dude. Are you getting DMs? Yeah, 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 people, I always do. <laughs> are people sending you? Dude, like, hey, people always start with like a, like apologizing or telling me like, I don't. this is not a jab or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm so afraid I'm going to rip everybody's like, face off. I'm like, if we God, had to dude, choose I'm not emoji, that sensitive. It's like a gray cloud. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so as as a kid, I was the uh, the grumpy, the Care Bear, right? So that was my oh, my favorite I Care Bear that. That, that I I toted around. I was the three leaf clover one. Wait, wait, yeah. hold on a second. Hold on a second. You guys had Care Bears? I did. Come on, dude. I mean, I'm I not did. like the manliest guy ever. You wow. Know, I, I well, actually, have... I thought you were for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had Care Bears? I did. Wow. I did. I was the Care Bears when I was a kid, dude. I never I couldn't help. It. That's all. I think because you guys, the, wait, hold on. Did you have a Cabbage Patch kid too? No. I, I wanted cards. one, and my I had, dad I had the garbage pail. No. Kids. no, garbage pail is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. went all garbage. No, my pail. sister had cabbage patch kids, and I had the garbage pail kids. Yeah, yeah. I had He Man. That's all I had. He Man and, and all the masters Have of the universe. Have you seen He Man? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Did <laughs> you look back at it? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, right? that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he would, hey, can I tell you something though? Yeah, With the figurines they yeah, literally <laughs> they literally modeled modeled them after pro bodybuilders. Bro, the, they don't look like athletes at all. They're all like, yeah. The, the, the Skeletor memes are my favorite. Oh yeah, there's so many good Skeletor memes yeah, those that are, are out there. Okay. Anyway, so I was gonna say that's crazy. Okay, sorry, and I got I'm supposed to mention our sale right now, but I do <laughs> want to say this because. We have a marketing department that operates separately from us, <laughs> meaning we have we don't really have much. We don't control what sales are going to run. Or what, I mean, we can. Obviously, we own the company, but often we don't know what's going to happen. And then they'll tell us, hey, here's the sale that's going on. Yeah. So 50% off everything? Like, why are they doing this right yeah. now? <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> because it's a party sale. We did it. Okay, we it's did not Memorial Day. Black yes. Memorial Day. Well, last, we did it. Okay, so they run it. They run it right before summer, and they run it at Black Friday. Those are the two times they run it. So we actually ran it this last year. We did? Too. Yeah, we did. We 50% did. off yeah. everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All programs? Jesus. We have two massive sales in the year. This is one of them right now. It's always right before summer. I mean, give or take. I, I think they did it over the same holiday weekend last time, I believe. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they There's did. There's no exceptions. So when huh? you're out shopping Every for your mattresses, Every program. think mm -hmm. fitness programs. Wow. <laughs> is there you a say limit? Mattresses? Did you say shop? What? Yeah. Isn't <laughs> that those always go on sale on Memorial Day weekend? Mattresses. Yeah. Uh, the cars. I, I took Doug, I right? took Doug mattress shopping the other day. What? That okay, sounds you weird. Doug a lot of weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very weird. You guys tested it out. You're so <laughs> into it. You're like you're a little closer to me right this. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey. This is a good spooning mattress here. <laughs> yeah. did, you, did, you, did you practice your wrestling? Like, <laughs> yeah. Throw them on the bed. Doug, this one's good. Yeah. Oh look, you bounced that really far. Uh, what mattress you get? What so we it? were shopping for the Park City property. Yeah, what was the brand, though? The brand's been around for 100 years. Uh, we've never heard of it. King Coil. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? King no. Coil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of it. It's like 97 years old. Or Super comfortable. Like yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Super comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're nice. I really like cool. uh, you guys. I didn't like realize them. the price range yeah. in oh, mattresses. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. Like Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this one is these. This is probably more moderate, right? There, we we were also uh, laying on. What was the other ones that were like seven thousand, right? They yeah, were, uh, I forget the name of the other ones we were looking at. That, wow. but we're like, okay, we're if we thought we were going to be at that house, you know, more than two or three. Well, thousand. it makes a difference, dude. I have a nice mattress now, and I sleep on it really good. So oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's definitely a big difference. Now, have you done it even in your spare room too? Because you get kicked out of your room sometimes too. I right? don't have a spare room. I got hella kids. Oh. Where am I gonna sleep? <laughs> Does it do? So, <laughs> and I got another one coming. Okay, in the so garage when, with your weights. So, so when you when you actually, not a bad idea, when, you, when you're booted for snoring, where do you go? I don't get booted. Oh, you boot her out. I don't you boot, boot her a out. pregnant woman I, out of I her room listen. into a bathtub. bathtub. <laughs> it's not my choice. Yeah, that's a true story. Hey, it's not my choice. Who sends a pregnant woman into a bathtub? Not me. She did it herself. She did it herself. <laughs> she went and slept in, in Okay, so room. Okay, so right now she when you like a tree when you are driving her crazy and snoring, you don't get up and leave? No, I don't get up and I don't where am I gonna go? One of the other rooms. The kids aren't always in all the other rooms, right? Yeah, no. So she'll so she'll sometimes go and <laughs> Oh dude, you dog, bro. Hey, it's a good mattress. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she goes and gets on the twin. Yeah. yeah. But unless he has a little twin, yeah. you know, she gets to go hey, sleep on. Come on, dude. Oh, bro. Come on, you made me feel bad now. Well, I leave. So that's like the like if I cause I'm just as guilty of like, especially since I've been sick, like Katrina will give me the sim similar thing. Go roll on your side. You know, and then if I still snore even on my side, then she'll let me know again. And then that's normally my signal. Yeah. Like I just I don't I half oh. asleep. No, I actually, I actually Dude. bought I actually bought a <laughs> mouth guard thing and it goes in your mouth. And what it does is it pulls your lower jaw forward <clears throat> like this. 
And it does work. It does prevent snoring. Now, the only problem is I wake up and my teeth are sore. So I hope it's not going to make my teeth all weird after that. <laughs> but it does work. If I put it on, it does prevent snoring. Dude, I just reminded yeah. me of, uh, has this ever happened to you guys where you had like such a vivid dream and you get woken up because you, you physically acted it out? Yeah, yeah. What did you act out? <laughs> so I was like, there was this big bully guy that was like picking on my friends or whatever. And like, I was trying to reason with him and then he swung at me and I literally like dodged one way, dodged the other. And then I swung back and I wake up and I hit my glass of water off the, the oh table God. right oh, next wow. to me. And it, <laughs> it like water everywhere. And thankfully it didn't like shatter into a bunch of pieces or anything, but Thank God you didn't swing the other way. I know I was thinking <laughs> that dude, I was like, Oh my God. I just <laughs> did you, Hey, did you know there was this, so the dream you have, there was this woman, there <laughs> was I have this, no idea where that came from. There was this, this true story. There was a guy who, he would wake up with like a bruise or a black eye or he'd get hit in the middle of the night and his wife's like, I'm asleep. Yeah. I, I'm sleepwalking or whatever. Anyway, he set up a hidden camera. This woman was a, she'd wake up and hit him and then pretend to go back to sleep. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's what yeah, that Intentionally or is that like no, a, dis a disorder she had? No, no, She'd wake up. Because I told you, my best friend has like, he's at, it's like, I don't know, like 1%. It's super rare what he has. There's there's actually a documentary on one of these comedians who has the same disorder and he did a, a documentary on it. But he has that. And it's like, it's actually really sad and scary because it, it like 80 or 90 something percent get Parkinson's. It's like, oh, oh yeah, it's, it's right. It's connected. Uh, yes. I, I think I remember you telling me. Yeah. This. And he, like, he gets up and he acts out the dreams, like super, like Dang. he, and he's dead. They'll be, his wife will be like, shaking him, him, can't wake him up. And he's like at the edge of his bed, getting ready to ju ju jump off. And there's been scary stories there's of these stories people of, jumping out windows and stuff like that. There's stories of people wow. having um, sleep sex. So they'll they'll have sex with their partner. Then the next day, I try that on Katrina all the time. Oh, I'm asleep. I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. I could tell. Sorry. No, this, no. This one, this one woman. I, I just watched just the whole, found its way there. The whole thing where the, she, the, the husband's like, "Oh man, you were it was great last night, whatever." And she's like, "What are you fucking talking about?" Well, anyway. She did that. She would have sleep sex with him. <laughs> the thing is, he thought it was the best, the best sex. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I can't believe you did that. Oh, really crazy. You know? yeah. Cra uh, crazy yeah. stuff. Anyway, yeah. I, I have to bring this up because um, we're supposed to mention um, working with Equilife, but I have been. So Equilife is the company that, uh, so we had Dr. Stephen Cabral on the show, functional medicine doctor, and they have a company where they do lots and lots of testing, hair tests, urine, blood, and then they'll coach you and figure out root causes of your health issues. And really, I mean, this is really comprehensive stuff. Anyway, someone was testing, uh, uh, messaging me, sorry, asking me about the type of tests that they do or what they're testing for. I have them written down. So here's some of the stuff that they'll test for. So if you're interested, it's really, really interesting. So they'll test for, they can, and these are just the popular ones, but they do more than this. Mm -hmm. They can test for candida, metabolic, uh, and vitamin function, food sensitivity test, they test your stress, mood, and metabolism, minerals and metals, toxic heavy metals. They test your neurotransmitters, your gut bacteria, and if you have parasites, they'll test your stress, sleep, and hormones, mold toxicity, environmental toxicity, and then your omega-3 um, levels and inflammation, and then there's much more. Did you guys end up, I ended up ordering uh, the Candida one. Uh, oh, to, did? To, to test that out and find oh, out. Oh, you are. And I'll report back on that. You got it. I'm pretty sure I do, dude. You That's, got everything. Yeah. It's just like, I would love to get more of a handle on this. I know I've done like every protocol known to man in terms of like, you know, having the uh, digestive, uh, uh, the HCL pills and everything yeah. else ahead of time to kind of eat away at it. But it's like, dude, if it's, if I can actually, you know, really get on top of that and get rid of this crazy chronic heartburn, it'd be great. Now we've, know? we've barely started working with them and I, I don't know about you guys. I'm already receiving DMS of people that love are, them. Yeah. Same. Yeah. That are already having a tremendous, yep. there was a, uh, in fact, um, the guy that we answered the question, uh, uh recently, he, yeah. they, they found with his diet that he was a slower oxidizer, needed more carbohydrates. He was eating differently before, not yeah. knowing why his energy was so low. Yeah. So they can, um, I mean, if you really want to get it, get down to understanding your body, yeah. And not and get out of the, get the guesswork out of the way, um, or not do a bunch of guesswork, or work with your doctor, yeah. which won't test you for any of this stuff. 
Yeah, well, get, get real answers, you know, well, real specifically to you. And then I don't, I don't know, Doug and Justin, if you guys can even answer this or not. But when this goes live, will we have the forum up yet, or will it be shortly after? Justin's the one setting that up. Yeah, but I we think should be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so what, what's the name of the forum going to be? Did it's going to be uh, is it holistic, holistic health? health forum. Yeah, and it'll be managed mm-hmm. by Doctor Cabral and his team. Yeah, yeah. So this is on Facebook. Yeah, it's going to be free. And it's a free one, so you can ask questions. And all so that by stuff. the time this airs, you should be able to search for it. And yeah. should we put Mind Pump in the name as well? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, Mind uh, Pump Holistic Health MP, with Dr. Yeah. MP Holistic Health or something like that. Well, that's the name of the forum. So okay. Yeah. it's okay. going to be something like that. So search that and then we'll let you in. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that yeah, that's going to be paired with working with them as a partner now, which I'm really excited. So, I mean, I think that we've already got great feedback on the hormone uh, forum that we created with uh, Dr. Rand and their team. Uh, we've got a huge response from that. Which, it, by the way, I had to go in there and uh, kind of straighten things out a little bit. So just so everybody yeah. knows, it's a hormone forum to ask about prescription uh, hormone therapy, testosterone replacement therapy, you know, stuff you do with your doctor. It is not a anabolic steroid forum. So <laughs> there's people on there. Oh, like, wow. Like, yeah, asking there's a stacks. Guys. I want to take some D-ball and trend well, and I'm, I'm running it with- oh, Literally, really? there was a guy on there. So I've, been, I've been using Trembolone <laughs> at 400 milligrams and what about this, that? And I'm like, it's not the place. <laughs> this yeah, is not where you're asking that. Yeah. This is well, for legit- the, the truth is, Dr. Rand and them, they have answers probably for that. And I hope that they know to just leave that alone. They do. Okay, they do. Yeah, they ignored them. Yeah. But yeah. I, I went in there because I, I don't want I don't want them wasting their time on stuff like that. No, it's not. That's not what it's designed. It's designed to help people that are in a See place that for bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. No, no one's gonna, nobody knows the answers. <laughs> There's a lot of guessing. <laughs> yeah. Don't you know, worry. I wanted to. Re- so I know we have a, another sponsor. We got to mention a, a, a great uh, commercial for them is that my son's d- using it now. So, um, you know, we've been dealing with the all ear infections and everything yeah. like that. So always first before you know we wanted we went this the the specialist and the surgery route was is there something in his diet that's causing inflammation right. that we try to figure out and. The only thing that we could figure out that he has consistently that may potentially have, have effect, and it also bothers me. So that's why I told Katrina, try teasing that out. It's his favorite thing that he has every morning, which is the toast. The, yes, oh. the cinnamon raisin toast. So you're gonna take out gluten? Yeah. So we took gluten mm. out. Um, but we, uh, well, we we took this the, this specific raisin bread toast out because it's something that he has every single day consistently. Mm. I've had a couple pieces before and instantly feel like bloated from it. And oh. Yeah. So I can't even. There's been a couple times where I've tried it, and been like, oh, I'll have it with them, and then I'm like, oh man, that doesn't make me feel good at oh, all. Weird. Oh, let me try it again. Oh, of course, you know. So by about the third time of me doing, it, I realized, okay, my body not reacting well to this. So the kid's got my DNA. So probably this could be something. So he's been using uh magic spoon instead. And Does I was like, it? he loves it. Oh, wow. he likes it dry. So we put the same way, you know, those little, uh, I love those little snap cup. captures. Yeah. yeah. The snap capture. Yeah, they stick captures. their hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we just fill that up with magic spoon and he just goes to town. He oh, loves, that's great. Yeah. Oh, he loves go. it. Yeah. yeah. Loves and he's it. getting good protein. It's grain free. That's yep. why he can eat it. Uh huh. Cause he's not having the gluten. Yep. Wow. That's what flavor. Uh, he likes fruit. That's what we have. The fruity, well, we have fruity and blueberry, but he likes the fruity one the Oh, best. that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of breakfast food, study came out showing that uh, moderate, but this is what the study said, moderate intake of eggs um, is positively correlated to better heart health. So people who eat eggs have better outcomes with heart disease, which is the opposite what of we what said, yeah, they we told said. us for de- for a oh, long yeah, time. Yeah, that especially eggs, egg yolks. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're so bad for your heart. And you know, there were studies that showed that if people ate a lot of eggs, that there was a correlation. And that, that was health. really less about eggs and more about cholesterol because eggs are so high in cholesterol. No, but I mean, it, oh, that was the fear, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that we used to think that dietary cholesterol had that much of an yes, impact. Yes, but what happened, was, what happened was because, and this is what's, what you need to pay attention to with studies, because it had been hammered into us for so long that eggs were bad for you, the only people left eating eggs were people that didn't really consider their health. So then they would do these population-based studies and they're like, oh, look, eggs are bad for your health. Well, yeah, those are the people that are also eating hot dogs and burgers and smoking, <laughs> right, type of deal. And yeah. so the truth is when they do the right controls, eggs eggs are actually, and I forgot who said this. I believe it might have been Dr. Stephen Garral off air. He said that eggs are, and egg yolks in particular, is like nature's multivitamin. It's one of the most nutrient dense. Well, it's foods. one of the most balanced foods yes. you could possibly have. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent, hundred percent, super healthy. I know mean, it reminds me of your your proverb you just said. Did that go? Did that air yet? Is that is that live yet, Andrew? The proverb, the parable, yeah, oh, the, the elephants. Parable. 
I'm, is that considered a parable or a proverb? I think it's I think that goes live before this airs for sure. Oh, so, oh okay. Yeah, so yeah, I've been you like that one? Yeah, I did. I really did enjoy that. I enjoyed it because one, I had never heard it, and then two, when I was listening to you say it, I knew where you're going with it. Yeah, this is like, oh, this is so good. For, Excellent. Yeah, for these guys. So That's a good one. Can't wait for our forum to yeah. hear it. Hey, uh, before we at, at the end here, I got to tell you guys, I read something really frightening. Um, you guys know anesthesia, right? So, oh god, put, no, are no, you no, really no, gonna bring no, this no, up right now? No, stop. Listen, okay, don't fuck. worry, don't worry. <laughs> so fucking anesthesia. So my son goes this. under in like five yeah. days. Yeah. Like, okay, it let's causes see. Irre- 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 yeah. reversible. Oh no. my god, okay. no, no, anesthesia now, all good, very advanced, amazing with it. In the <laughs> early days of anesthesia. There was a, I can't remember the name and I l- tried looking it up. I couldn't find it. So maybe we'll find it uh, by the time this airs. But they would, in the early days of anesthesia, they would give women this anesthesia during childbirth and supposedly it would help, right? Now the women would still be moaning or whatever, but then they'd have the baby afterwards. Like, oh, that was amazing. Well, anyway, they discovered later on that the anesthesia never blocked the pain. It just made them forget. So they were giving this anesthesia to women and they were going through surgery, doing shit throughout the whole process. Wow. And they even yeah. did it with surgeries yeah. where people would feel everything the whole time and then they forget about it afterwards. Like, yeah, that was great. And it seemed to work just, just awesome. Dude, how That's scary horrific. is that? Yeah, how just, horrific is just that? Just kill brain oh cells, God. that all it did or what? Well, it's just, how scary is that? Like you're in there, they're cutting your leg off. You're like, ah! I, no, and then afterwards you forget. You're like, yeah, it was good. And I wonder how they how they figured it out. They finally started to like your ask people while they're going through it. Is this painful? That's a good question. That's how they had to, yeah, right? The only question. the way they had to have figured that out was because if they always forgot about it, they had to have someone probably thought, you know, we've never really thought about actually asking while they're going through it. Wow. Right? So yeah, on a level of one to ten, how do you feel like ten? Yeah. Ten! Yeah. You know, like that. And then afterwards you're like, no, I was fine. Yeah, that was good, <laughs> good stuff. How scary is that? Is it called Twilight Sleep? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's a Injection of morphine and scopolamine. Scopolamine. Yeah. And, and they uh, morphine's gonna... They cause a sort of amnesia. So they wouldn't remember the process of labor or... Oh, delivery. my God. Yeah. How bad So was random. When you come across that? Early medicine. It was an old... I read it a long time ago, and it just... You know, you know how it works. Dude, it was it's rough medicine. what we had to get through to get the kind of... Uh, uh, procedures we have now. Today. Well, you know, there were so many women that would die in childbirth yeah. because of, uh, they would get, I don't remember what they call it, something fever. Uh-huh. But it was because these medical students, this is before we understood, we really, under, really understood cleanliness, right? Yeah. These medical students would go work on cadavers and shit and then they go deliver babies <coughs> and not wash their hands. Mm. So these women would get, like a high rate of them would get infections and oh, then wow. they'd get fevers and die. And they thought, oh, this is just childbirth. No, it's because you don't wash your hands, dude. Oh, wow. This is before we really understood that. Yeah, you ever watched so. that show? I think it was The Nick, uh, where it was like before they had, where they were like prescribing people like cocaine and things like that, like, <laughs> you know, to get through like some of these ailments and, you know, the very first uh, hernia surgery and all that. And they kind of go through the process of like how they were able to get to that point where they actually figured it out. Uh, and just all the poor people that like had to go through the butchering process to fine tune it. Well, it's you, like, oh. you know how they used to like uh, rank surgeons and like during the Civil War was the speed at which they could amputate an, a limb. Like yeah. you were a good surgeon if I mean, you could yeah. cut that shit off in 10 seconds. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, though, it right? It sure yeah. does. Yeah, I mean, I you could be on the battlefield. It's like, bro, we got a minute to get out of here. It's like, <laughs> cut that shit off. Let's go. Oh, know? scary. Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our sponsors, actually one of our longest running sponsors, Organifi. They make plant-based performance-enhancing supplements and supplements that enhance your health. One of my favorite supplements of theirs is their green juice. I also like their red juice and their gold juice, but they also have plant-based protein powder. So if you have a dairy intolerance, Try their plant-based protein. It tastes really good. Most plant proteins taste like crap. Not Organifi. It tastes really, really good. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump and you'll get 20% off any and all of their products. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Brian from Ontario. What's up, Brian? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, big fan. I've been listening to you guys for just over a year now. Um, little background. I became a trainer um, just over a year ago. I grew up in, uh, or I, sorry, I live in a small town with um, a very bad training mentality. Everything is uh, balls to the wall, mm. more reps than you can handle. And the signature of success is if your client doesn't walk out of the gym. <laughs> I remember that. I remember happens. those were the days. I remember those days. That's what happens when you hit your balls against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. So I 
I've started my own personal training. Um, it's out of my garage. Uh, the clients that I have appreciate the mentality that I have, which is a lot of it, which I've learned from you guys over the last year. Um, my reason for calling in today was I have a client, um, a little background on her. She's a female, um, 205 pounds, five foot eight. Her goal was to get some uh, fat loss, weight loss, talked her into the whole, let's not just uh, go on a diet and um, do cardio, talked her into the resistance training and buying into it. Um, we started tracking. She has calories of about 1,200 when we started. We got that up to 1,500 very reluctantly. Um, and then recently over the last couple of weeks, we finally got her up to about 1,800 calories. Um, she's seeing tremendous strength gains. Um, we started doing two um, whole body work a week. We're currently now doing three split works out, workouts a week. Um, as I said, her strength gains are great, upper and lower. Body composition changes, again, upper and lower have been fantastic. Body fat has increased um, since January by 0.6, which I am attributing to hopefully just the increase in calories. My question for you guys is subcutaneous belly fat will not budge. It is super stubborn. It is there. It is very prominent with her. It's a very big sticking point with her and probably the whole reason why she initially came to me. So my question to you guys is where do I take her from here? Do I work on going into a deficit, more cardio, which I don't want to do? She's doing cardio two times a week on her own right now, half an hour to 45 minutes or maybe a new program. So I'm open to your ideas. All right, good question. So real quick, Brian, you said her body composition is doing really well, but then you said she went up in body fat percentage. What did you mean by that? Do you mean that she's gaining so, muscle? Yeah, she's gaining okay. muscle. So we, um, it, it's, and it's weird. Um, I have just a, a, a quick body scan scale. Um, so that's where I'm saying the body fats come up. Oh, uh, you're using bioelectric impedance. Yeah. Not very, a, not very accurate. How's her body weight? Has it changed at all? No, so we're actually up three pounds okay. from when she. I think you're doing great. Yeah, bro. you're on I, track. I, I think you're doing great right now. The fact that you've taken her from, by the way, twelve hundred, because eighteen hundred calories to the average listener may not sound like a lot, but taking someone from twelve hundred to eighteen hundred, yeah, six hundred more calories a day. That's a lot. That's I like mean, three, two and a half hours of cardio. That's right. That's a fifty percent increase. So that's phenomenal where she's at, and to have only added 0.6% and or three pounds to the scale, which is like- I Probably mean, muscle. Yeah, that's nothing. So here's the th here's the challenge, and why I like this question, because I, this is, uh, I, remember, I remember getting this challenge so many times, and the hard part is I know I know why you're asking this is because she wants to get rid of yeah, this she's, belly. Yes, she's being, of course. Yeah, she's, she's antsy. She's ready, to, she's, you know, she's ready to start seeing herself lean out and feels like she's been putting in the consistent work with you. And this is where it's always really tough for a trainer because the truth is what you're doing is perfect. I mean, I would stay the course to continue to try and build muscle, to continue to try and creep those calories up more. I mean, a, a woman, she said she's 5'8", 200 and something pounds. I mean, I'd yeah. like to, I'd like to see her in the mid two thousands, at least I'd like to see her up at 2,500 calories. Just so you can cut down to 2000. Right. So I'd like to keep working in that direction and keep pushing the message of let's build muscle, let's build strength, let's build this metabolism, let's get these calories up. And let me tell you, if I could get you to 2,500 calories and then we come down, we're going to be in a much better place. Now I would explain to her so she understands, listen, what I can do with you right now is I could take you from that 1800. We can go back down to 1200 and I could show you, we can lean out. We would start to lose some belly fat. You would and get a little bit leaner. The problem is we'd stall out before we got all the way to your goal. And now you're back at that 1200 calorie uh, mark again, and that's not sustainable. Hmm. But if you trust this process, what we want to do is I, what I'd like to do with you is I'd like to get you up to more like 2,500 calories and then bring you down to somewhere like Sal said, 2,000 calories, which is significantly higher than you've ever been. And we're also plummeting. You're trying to yeah. drop that belly fat. And, and, and a talk about rate. sustainability. Like now she can sustain it because she's eating 2,000 calories a day and she's at her goal body weight. Like what a great position to be in. The other thing to consider too is, is this, Brian, like the most challenging thing that you'll ever do as a coach or a trainer is not program design. It's not exercise form and technique, although those are important. The most challenging thing you're, you're going to have to do is guide people in the right direction, especially when they want to go in the wrong direction. So you have to get really good at that. And so here's a strategy that I'll, I'll, I'll give you that I think might help. Rather than focusing on body composition with her, which is she's building muscle and that's great and she's getting stronger and that's awesome too. 
start to help her point out all the other benefits that she's noticing. I'm going to assume because she went from 1,200 to 1,800 calories and she's stronger, she's probably got more energy. She's probably noticing uh, she has a better libido. She's probably getting better sleep. She probably feels better in her clothes. She's more stable and more productive in her more day. More productive. Like point these things out because otherwise, what happens is a person thinks they're not making any progress because they don't pay attention to anything else other than what the scale says. They go, like, "Why? Why am I doing this? I'm not. I'm not moving anywhere." When you start to point this out, they go, "Oh yeah, I feel way better. Oh my god, my skin looks better. Wow, my energy and, and is so much better." There's a trainer trick to this, by the way, too. Don't wait to have this conversation when she's venting to you how she wants to lose yeah, weight. Yeah, good point. You do this while you're in the middle of training. Like, hey, how's your sleep been lately? And and get her to tell you like, oh, it's been really good. Have you noticed, is your energy increased? Like, so don't wait for this to be like your rebuttal to her complaining about not seeing the results because then you're not going to win that way. The trick is to get her to tell you all these positive things that you know as a coach is probably happening so that when she does have that moment later on where she's frustrated. She says, man, Brian, I, I just feel like, you know, I haven't lost any weight. And you go, you got, then you remind her, but you remember, Susie, we we're just talking about how you, your energy's up. You feel stronger. You're in a better mood. Your sleep is better. Your sex drive is better. We are seeing great progress. That's when you remind her of that, but you want to get her to say it in another context, right? Not when she's complaining about not seeing the results. Then you're yeah. pointing out, oh, or you're probably from this because then she'll deny it or she won't admit it. So you want to get her to, to, to vocalize that while you're working out or training or when you're in a positive mindset. And then your goal as a coach, when that situation does happen, then I'm reminding her of all the other things that are yeah. that are positive. I bet her quality of life has improved dramatically. Now, from a workout perspective, I mean, you're training her right if she's getting stronger and building muscle. As far as activity, you can help, you could talk to her about injecting activity into a normal day. More walking. You know, walking, you know, 10 minutes after every meal, that's an additional 30 minutes of activity. Forget the calorie burn. It's just healthy to do that. And it makes people um, feel really good. So you could talk to her about that. As far as the belly fat is concerned, you, the first place that you gain body fat is usually the last place that you lose it. And that's largely determined by genetics. Now with women with, with belly fat storage, sometimes that can <coughs> mean high levels of cortisol. Sometimes it can mean hormone imbalances, but you're moving in the right direction. Okay. She sounds like she's getting healthier. She's able to eat more, really hasn't gained weight. She's gotten stronger. So you're moving in the right direction anyway. And so this is really about, hey, look at all these, the, you know, these are the canaries in the coal mine. They're showing us that we're about to get on the snowball effect of fat loss. We're boosting your metabolism. Like we're going to get there. And when we do and we cut you down, you're going to eat more than you did before, but you'll be much leaner. And you're only going to work out with me twice a week for the rest of your life, like just to maintain that. Like, isn't that a great place to be? Can you see how you can maintain that forever? So these are the conversations you want to have as a trainer. And this is what's going to make you make or break you as a trainer. And I know, like I said earlier, exercise, you know, selection and form and technique, that's all important. But this is what separates the great trainers from the average ones. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I feel like I'm on the right track. It's just, and she, and it's as a client, like she's trusting me. She's still trusting me. Good. A couple ago, I got the text message like, Hey, look, I'm down a pant size. So wow. I mean, she's wait, hold on a second. She's down yeah. a pant size and her weight is, yeah. is up a little bit. Do you know what that means? Yeah. She's, I, she's, she's lost up. body fat and she's gained muscle. Yeah. That electronic impedance scale, don't rely on that, by the way. That's, that's one of the more inconsistent ways to test body fat. Use body fat calipers or yep. use circumference, circumference measurements. measurements. Yeah, yeah is, is good at showing that. And and, and practice, going back to what I was saying, you know, practice, you know, while you're in the workouts and you're communicating these, these things, you know, practice helping her make the connections to all the other positive things. It's really mm -hmm. tough when a client comes in and they have a very specific goal. I want to get this body fat off. I want to build this muscle. I want to run faster. They become very myopic and that's all they think about, right? But you as a coach want to help them make that connection to all the other aspects of their life that is improving. And it's not just simply pointing it out one time. It's constantly reminding them that like, you know, and that's why you feel so good because we keep doing this. This is what's so great. Remind yourself. That's why you love this thing. It's not mm -hmm. just about that weight on the scale. It's also about all these other things that your life is improving. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey, that answers my question. Eh? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Right on, Brian. Show her this episode, Brian. So she can I will. Hear... <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. That's the that's the that's the secret to successful trainers. Well, you, really, nailed, you, 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 you nailed it. I mean, that's 
that's tough though, you know? That takes that takes a lot of experience oh, yeah. to yeah. to learn to you gotta work up your confidence to get to that level where you can just like be adamant. We are on the right track and and be able to keep painting that vision. And again, you do really do have to get in their ear that like what we are doing is moving us into the right place we want to be. That's the hard part. That's the hard part as a trainer or a coach, because the person <clears throat> wants what they want or yeah. they want what they think they need or they want. They actually don't have an idea. So you have to communicate this effectively and you have to do it constantly and you have to help them build a relationship with exercise that doesn't just revolve around body weight. It revolves around a lot of the benefits or all the benefits because it gives them a much clearer picture. Our next caller is Sean from Minnesota. Sean, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Guys, how you doing today? Good, Good brother. Good. How you doing? Hey, I just can't tell you how grateful I am for everything you guys do. I mean, it's your your passion, your energy, your synergy together, uh, your knowledge. It's completely helped me in so many ways. And I just want to say thank you. You're just, you guys are just awesome. Man, appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you, Brad. Well, you got a 54-year-old man, started uh, his first MAPS program six weeks ago, I think it was now, and slowly trying to get my body back to moving. Um, long story short, you know, I started training back when I was 16, 18. And it's funny, I just caught your podcast. What was it? Three, uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning of the year. So I finally found it through a lot of diving I did with um, Sal. I don't know how your tummy was, but I had a really bad tummy where I couldn't walk the dog around the block without dry heaving and throwing up and thought I better get on this stuff. So I started diving deep into it and finally found you guys. So anyway, I came up and, you know, some of your stories are great. Like I remember, I still remember, I can't remember who brought up the universal machine when I first put up a hundred pounds and putting the big plates on the weight. And then I went through college and back in the uh, late eighties, it was the bigger, faster, stronger program out of Nebraska, the football team that was having a lot of success. So my career really been based around performance, power, um, uh, speed, whatever, uh, however we want to call it training on the Aerodyne bike, the old Aerodyne, we were pumping the arms back in the 90s. And then, you know, through my 40s, got more into the old man workout where I was working out just to kind of maintain and uh, had the kids growing up. And then now at 54, I find myself taking care of the tummy first, the foundation down there, and then kind of branching out and really want to do what I really want to do. And the, I've been doing mobility for the last six weeks and I don't have a plan or a big achievement goal, but I'd like to get out of bed without worrying about my back hurting after so many years. I'd like to get the mobility and I've been working a lot in my workouts. I went to the full body workouts for the first time in my life, which I love and, you know, really uh, focusing on form, focusing on structure, went back to, I had, you know, I've had a few surgeries and uh, things like that. We're using one limb at a time, right? Uh, you know, pause down, perfect form, explode up, right arm first, right arm first, left arm second, whatever it is. But I really just want to know you guys' take on it about, um, am I starting out of the right path? There's a gal that works with you named Ann. She's been a godsend. She's kind of helped me get going. And, you know, and I'm just wondering, Am I starting out on the right path to live this second part, the second half of life as I'm looking down the hill? <laughs> yeah. Now, Sean, you, you used to play professional hockey. I saw this in your uh, in the question that you you sent us, correct? Yes, sir. I played for a while. Oh, good deal. So you've you um your what drove you to work out for so long was high level performance. High level performance, pushing your body, um, getting stronger, being faster. The challenge with that is making the mental switch, which I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? Making the mental switch from pushing performance, just feeling better and working on mobility. So that's the big challenge. Although it sounds like you're on the right track, it really does. It sounds like you're really moving in the right direction. As far as programs are concerned, Sean, I like um, uh, Map Symmetry for someone like yeah. you. I think that would be a great program because it's all unilateral, or at least there's a, a few phases in there that are mostly unilateral. And the first couple of weeks are... Uh, isometric to really get the body to fire properly. And it does encourage balance throughout the body. And you do get mobility movements in that um, as well. Um, if you don't have a program like MAPS Prime or Prime Pro, I think those will help you as well. He's got Prime already. He's done the compass test already. So he's got Prime, but I agree Symmetry will we'll send over to you. You got to have that. And I'd like to put him in the forum. 
And I'd like to point out, did I, did I just look you up and see that you're a Stanley cup winner? Also, <laughs> were you not going to mention that? Were, yeah, you not gonna, was, were you not going to mention that, bro? You're just going to like humble slide. brag. Yeah, were you just going to say like, yeah, I kind of yeah. played some professional You're hockey. You're kind of a big deal. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's rad. And we will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a clip up when we when you're talking now. So now that I know that. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe you didn't mention that. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you got the right you got the right idea. You got the right attitude. Um, for the gut health, uh, you know, I don't know if you're working with a functional medicine practitioner, but that's where I would go because if you yes. if you can't get that if if you get that solved, it makes a huge difference. If you can't get it, if you don't get it solved, it's going to really make everything else uh, so much more challenging. But you're you're on the right path, man. Really just what you're aiming for <laughs> is is feeling good. Like, how's my energy? How do I mm-hmm. feel? Do I feel mobile? Do I feel stiff? Do I feel painful? I don't, you, what you don't want to aim for is soreness and exhaustion um, and beating yourself up. Uh, that really yeah. doesn't have a lot of value for you anymore. Now it's like, do I feel better after my workout than I did before? Do I move better? Am I getting out of bed with lots of energy? Use that as your guide and then slowly you'll progress. Uh, sounds like you've that. already reframed all that. I mean, it's it sounds like your mindset is in that direction, which is the hardest thing with ex-athletes, especially of, of your caliber, to get them to not identify uh, with the workouts the same way and, and not approach them with the same type of intensity. Whereas you can use that uh, that discipline, that athletic discipline, and, and move it more towards you know, restoring your body and addressing imbalances and, you know, really like bringing yourself back up to optimal health. So I really think that uh, you're on the right track. Everything that you've mentioned so far is what I would recommend. So I know you called us to uh, ask us questions, but I want to ask you a couple questions since I have you. (laughs) So give me, give me a favorite player to play with and, and guy, you guy you hated playing against. Oh, wow. Great question. Well, I was blessed to play for a little while and, you know, I played, with a guy named Peter Forsberg and Joe Sackick in Colorado that were just for people, I mean, super players, but they were even better people, great human beings. And I got to learn from them daily. I really learned a lot when the paycheck showed up because theirs had a few extra zeros on it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, playing against, you know, just the great players that were, um, you know, the Lemieux's of the world, the Wayne Gretzky's of the world. And back in my era, it's back when a ham and egger like myself got to actually be out there and try to shut them down and try to keep up with them. So, you know, it was just, it was just, it was fun. Those are great. I know those are easy names to throw out there, but learned a lot from both of them, both on the ice and off the ice. Do you, do you still hang around the sport and follow it closely? Or are you over it? You know what? I've been lucky. I, I've been able to coach my kids growing up. I got oh, a 19 year old so cool. actually played though, Vermont and I got a little boy 15 and I don't, Putting on the skates these days, like you're talking about, stability is definitely something that I like to focus on because when you throw the razor blades on your feet, that's not all there as much as it used to be. (laughs) But um, yeah, so I'm around the game. I I consult in it and I'm still coaching in it. But yeah, it's just, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a blessing for me and my family and, and it's just been great. Well, good deal. So Sean. cool, Sean. Man. Well, I think yeah. I, did you tell him we're giving him the we're gonna set yeah, you up with the forum. We're gonna set you up with the forum. I'm gonna send you map symmetry as well because I think that'll be a good program if you don't already have it. Well, you guys, that's very nice. You don't need to do that, but I just I just want to let you know what a big difference you've made, not only in you know, millions of people's lo- of lives, but mine. It's just been amazing. I'm all in. You guys are just a blessing. And I'm telling you, from a guy who is 54 and I that first compass test, the first three, and got a definite F minus in all three. <laughs> <laughs> and with your yeah. and with your being the kind of shift from that uh, mind focus to the mind body connection, uh, instead of having to put up the you know whatever weight it is in the bench press, the right arm already uh, finished, and the left arm about halfway up to really focusing on uh, that stuff. It's been it's been a godsend. So thank you, boys. I really appreciate it. And if there's anything I could ever do for you, please let me know. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank well, you make, sure much, you say, make sure you say hi to us when you get in the forum. So tag us and then uh, we'll make sure we stay on top of you and pay attention to how, how everything's going. Oh, I will for sure. Thank you, boys. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for calling, man. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, yeah, this is cool. so great. Doug's looking him up over there, and he's a <laughs> Stanley Cup yeah. winner. <laughs> yeah, no, no big deal. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty he's rad. Not a slouch. But I tell you, man, it's uh, uh, Justin. You probably have the most experience with this because you played at a pretty high level. It's like I've, I've trained people like this, not professional ex pros, but people who played college. Yeah. And it was years later, 
And their mentality was the main thing I had to switch because when you train for decades mm -hmm. for maximum performance, it is a completely different mentality when you're training to correct imbalances and to move better. It's like, it's so different. And you're so disciplined, you know, and that's the thing. It's <clears> like, you, uh, it, it, it's a hard thing because it works so well for you. Uh, it got you to the highest of highs, like the standing yeah. cup. That's amazing. Like I, you can't get any higher than that. Uh, in that sport. And so, yeah, to, to now really focus on what's going to benefit, you know, the rest of your life and, you know, being able to be there with your kids and move and be active and healthy, different mentality, totally different mentality, but you yeah. can apply that same, uh, athletic mind in that direction. That's right. That's the, that's the cool part about getting a client like this. If I yes. Had, they I, got the discipline. You yeah. Work once on you that. get them to switch the mindset and make, and figure out like the way they need to focus and channel that energy. Um, they're incredible to train right. because they, they've, they've for decades had built that discipline. It's just learning how to refocus it. It's not about intensity and how much weight I can move. It's like applying that, that discipline towards, okay, getting better connected, more mobility, like overall health, like, and he's there, dude. So, uh, pretty, it'll be cool to watch his journey. Our next caller is Dan from Georgia. What's up, Dan? How can we help you? I'm um, doing great guys. I just wanted to thank you guys, you know, Doug, Adam, Sal, and Tiny Beard uh, for doing everything. <laughs> <you guys> do. <laughs> yes. Long Thanks, live dude. Tiny Beard. Uh, <laughs> keep it going. Recognize. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm running into this problem um, with my back squats and it seems like randomly happened to me. It feels like it might be fatigue because I just can't seem to lift the weight I normally can. Also, I'm not sure if it's maybe just because of an old injury I had like about 10 years ago. Like, I think I might have herniated a disc and maybe that's impacting as well. So I'll go like squatting like low bar, doing like a top set of uh, four reps to like 260 pounds comfortably to then having to do 205 or 185 because it's just, it feels like so intense. Like I'm still doing 260 or even heavier. So I'll seemingly like work my way all the way back up then it just happens to me again. So, and just to give you some context, I've been lifting for just a little over a year now. And so I was just seeing what you guys would recommend for like a new lifter like me to figure out how would I go about like troubleshooting this? Like, would it be a uh, mobility, priming, fatigue, or a symmetry problem maybe? Interesting. Do you, is it, does it, do you get painful? Is it an injury that you feel? Uh, I want to say weak. it just feels like tight. Hmm. Like almost like, if I was to go stretching, like it'd feel like it'd be like a little bit better, but, um, so let me get this straight. You, you, you work up to 260, and then all of a sudden you draw, you have to go down 60 pounds and then, and then you can build it back up again over time. And then it does it again. So it's like all of a sudden. Right. So it'll be like three or four months. Like, um, just recently I, I got above it and I got to, I tried to a one rep max and I got up to 195. Now I felt good there for a little while. Then all of a sudden, like when I started anabolic, I couldn't hardly do one reps for 260. Oh, so you like, got it to it, 295, it just, you meant? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, just recently, but like in the beginning, like I got up to like 230, then I had to drop it down to like, you know, 150. Then I got up to 260. Then I had to drop it down to like 185 because I don't know, like just something happened and just all of a sudden it just became unbearable. I just had to like, there's a lot of variables here. There's, yeah, a, there's a I, lot of different things that could be usually strength declines don't happen rapidly, like all of a sudden, um, which that's what you're saying, right, Dan? It's just all of a sudden out of nowhere. Yeah. And are we, okay. I just want to get some clarity here before we start troubleshooting here. Uh, is this within a single workout or do you mean like over a period of time? Like, so for example, like you come in on Monday and you were hitting it, hitting 260, then all of a sudden the following Monday you squat again and you can only do 180 or is it within that workout you work up to 260 then you have to drop all the way back down to to 180 or something can, give me more clear yeah it's the the following week like okay. I'll feel like I'm like really excellent I just hit the 260 really hard then like you know the next week I was like yeah I mean I could definitely like bump that up like you know another five ten pounds now have you teased like, out Dan have you teased out like uh other things that are going on in your life at the same time for example like you know, is it been a stressful week for work? Did I not get very good rest? Uh, was your diet really dialed in on one week and not so another week? Did you train it at different times? Like a lot of these other factors could impact. Yeah, but but to have it drop from 260 to 180 in a week um, it, without like lots of pain, like it's an injury, that is, if you get weaker within a week, it's usually 10 pounds, 15 pounds. 
you know, it can be as much as 30 pounds, but we're talking about when you're squatting a lot, 500 pounds down to 470, that's, but 260 to 185, it's a pretty big drop. And within that weight range, within a week, I would, I would have, I would go get my nervous system checked and make yeah. sure that there's no issues with, that's where I'm leaning yeah, this. with your nervous system or um, where, where you're not getting all of a sudden something's getting blocked and you're not able to fire um, you know, the, the juice to the muscles, if you will. Um, so I would, I would actually, this is, this is something that I would turn to Western medicine for, and I would let my doctor know and say, it's very strange. I have these sudden drops, significant sudden drops in strength in a very short period of time. Because if you went from 260 to like, oh, I, you know, then I went up, to, then it was 240 the following week or 250 mm -hmm. and it felt just as heavy. Well, that, that can happen with overtraining and fatigue. And this you know. is also perceived though, bro. You gotta think, okay. What I'm hearing though from him is not like, like, he all of a sudden feels all stiff or weak and can't do that. That's what he says. He yeah, says I he know. can't do it. I know, but that's not okay. So there's definitely been times in not not that long ago where I'm lifting where, you know, 315 feels comfortable. And then all of a sudden the next week, like, you know, 275 feels like a fucking brick house. Well, 315 yeah. to 275 is different than 260 to 185. Yeah. That's a big drop. And the more weight you lift, the bigger the drop can be with fatigue. But 260 to 185. I would definitely get, I would have my, my nervous system well, checked it, out. I mean, does it like shut off? Like, do you lose muscle tension, uh, you know, within your rep? Like, is this something that like is problematic in terms of when you're, when you're getting up to that amount of weight, does your body just sort of shut off? Uh, no, like it, it's just, it feels like just really heavy. So like, okay, I, I'm trying to think like, I know like, the very first time like it's ever happened to me, which were like I fatigued out, like I was benching one time and it also had the same effect where I went from like, you know, 150, I had to go down to 95, but that's the only time it's ever happened to me benching. But I, I seemingly have this happen to me multiple times, but it's only with my back squat. Yeah. I would get, but the I'll, I'll, I would get the nervous system looked at. And then do you notice any other symptoms along with that? Like more fatigue, wor like worse sleep, uh, right. changes in balance or anything like that? No, like I, I feel like I sleep great, and like I've been sleeping even better since like uh, Adam recently mentioned like the chili pad, and like ever since I've gotten that, like I've been sleeping even better. That's been a godsend. Now, oh, cool. what does your nutrition look like? Like, how have you been eating? Like a, a carb amount? Like, what what's the kind of energy you have like going into these workouts? Well, for the last year, because like I'm like really s kind of tiny. I'm like at six three. And last year I started at like about 160 pounds. I've been bulking like constantly. So like from the, I guess the time I ex started experiencing this, it, my calories have been anywhere from like 3,500 to about 4,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, go get it looked at. I, I, mean, would, yeah, I would, I'm, 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 I'm I, mystified. Yeah. Cause that's a big drop. That's a pretty big drop. Now the way I would work out with the information that I've, that I'm given right now is I would reduce your intensity overall. And I would just train with a moderate level of intensity until you see until you get cleared and make sure that there's nothing going on with your nervous system and there's nothing autoimmune that's going on. So those are the big ones I'd want to just double check. And I'm not saying that's what's happening, but a drop in strength that significant um, in that range, um, it's pretty, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Unless something big happened, which you would, you would know, you would have told me and said, Hey, I did 261 week. And then I got lost four nights of sleep or I got really sick and then went back to the gym in which case I would say, well, yeah, that makes sense. But if nothing big happened in between and you were doing 260 one week and the next week it was 185 and it felt just as heavy, that's that's what makes me say, let's 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 rule out any medical conditions first. Yeah. Huh. Like I'm just trying to think for so if it was just like 30 pounds instead of like that would that still be acceptable or that still be like probably i, probably I mean seek. you know 20 20 pounds you know at, at 260 i mean i would expect that like if i trained a client let me put it this way if i trained a client and they did 260 for four on monday and then i saw them the following monday and they were struggling to get four with 185 i would have a lot of questions mm -hmm. okay so i'm not trying to freak you out i'm just trying to you know, yeah just I, I think it'd be a good idea to rule out because you know what could happen? You said you had a herniated disc before in, in your written question. Right. You could literally, you could be, the herniation could be pressing on a nerve that could make you lose strength yeah. and you just don't know it. That's you why I was worried. Like maybe like your, your whole body kind of shuts down once it, you know, you're in mid lift. So that's why I, that would be my concern is like something like that happening. Yeah. So I, I wish we could be more help, but I, I think that this would require well, what uh, we'll, what, what we'll do is what, Dan, are you not in our forum yet? Are you in our forum? 
Uh, no. Okay, so I'll have Doug give you access to our free form. Then I'd love for you to go get it looked at and then to give us more feedback after that. Um, I even I would even love to see like a squat. So if I could see uh see maybe maybe we could video the next time. It'd be great to see each the two squats, the contrast. Right. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So maybe you could video some squats for us, throw it in the forum so we could take a look and see if we can can help troubleshoot this. There is a lot of variables here. So that, I mean it's uh, it's really tough to like nail it down and say, oh, this is for sure what's going on with you. Um, but maybe we can help further after one, go get it looked at, two, uh, shoot some uh, some videos for us in the forum. It's definitely something I've been working on because like I had a hard time sort of going down to parallel. Then I just dropped all the way down to about 135 and went basically ass the grass and been like feeling it in my quads now. But like I'm gonna be going to performance here. Would it be better for me to run uh symmetry before performance or like focus yeah. more on prime or prime pro? Yeah, yeah, I think so symmetry would be great. Symmetry would be better for Do you me. have that program, Dan? Yes. All right, okay. perfect. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a great option. All right. All right, man. Well, thank you guys. I we'll appreciate it. We'll see you in the forum. Yeah, keep us posted, man. I'm curious. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I don't want to scare him, but um, uh, you know, imagine if you had a client that did. No, that. you're right. I, I, mean, I would. I would well, want to check yeah. for. So you're right. The, just got to rule things out. The yeah. number. The the number is pretty large. That's I when mean, I would send a client to. The, to he the could also be kind of like he might be explaining the most extreme situation, right, or case. Here's some things too. Okay, like so, this is very possible. You take it. You got somebody who uh, is, you know, very interested in increasing their back squat, and they they they're, they love to keep ta testing their PR. He hits a, a PR at two sixty, overreaches, sore as fuck, has a rough week, maybe stress wise, didn't consume enough calories really, and then goes in the next week. Very easily could see a huge dr drop sure. in the in in the squat. I've, I mean, I've done this to myself. I just feel like I've, I feel like that would have been a part of his question, and you know, he's like, no, no I agree. Uh, you're right. I mean, I think your advice is right. I mean, go get this. Go go get it looked at first, just to make sure we can. I, I would rule out autoimmune issues. Uh, make sure there's nothing autoimmune going on because there's certain autoimmune issues, uh, especially those that, that affect the nervous system, where you'll go through, like you'll feel fine, and then you'll get a, a bout of sudden weakness or loss of balance or issues like that. Could also be like we said, he had said he had a herniated disc. If that herniated disc sometimes impedes the nerve and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't have to completely cut the nerve off. It's just, you're weaker. And so you're just not pushing as hard and you feel normal. You just notice the bar is is much lighter. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, here. I, I do. I, the nutrition was where I went initially. Totally. Because to me, yeah. I think that that's what this says to me is like he, I thought maybe he was like way, he was like dieting, right? Like I thought maybe he was cutting. He was like cutting down. Yeah. yeah, right. He hits this PR. Then also yeah. he's an extreme cut. Maybe he's not sleeping very well. Okay. Well that's, it's possible to see a, a, a drop like that. Although that is a pretty big drop. Our next caller is Brent from Colorado. Brent, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? I uh, just wanted to start out saying thank you. Uh, I've been listening to you guys basically every day for the last two years. Uh, and because of you all, I, I did. I went all in with NCI, uh, and I've been learning great stuff from them. Awesome. Uh, deal. Yeah, so my question is uh, program how, how to program for, for my soldiers. So I've got about 15 soldiers that I'll work with for about 60 to 90 minutes a day. Um, so a little bit of background, I've been in the army for 14 and a half years. Um, there's been a lot of changes in the fitness program, but it's always seems to be pretty slow on the, on the catching up. Uh, typically the PT sessions are either bare minimum, do some push ups, sit ups, and then just by, uh, getting through the time or they're extremely intense where they're trying, the instructors are trying to make people puke. Uh, so we are aircraft mechanics. So we do do some heavy lifting, carrying toolboxes, heavy parts and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit of brain fog. <laughs> My kids got me sick. Oh, uh, no I feel that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think on the I was listening to you guys this morning and you said that you I'm going, it hadn't been two weeks. Oh, bro. I'm, <laughs> going, October. I'm going through it right now again. So I feel. Yeah. That. <laughs> uh, so the army started a uh, holistic health and fitness program to kind of do like an overall fitness. Uh, they changed the ACFT to the ACFT, which is not just pushups and sit-ups anymore. Uh, we do have some equipment. Uh, we've got hex bars and, uh, barbells and, uh, bar hex bars, barbells, kettlebells, uh, bands, uh, benches, all, all that, that kind of stuff. We don't have dumbbells though, but the issue is all the soldiers are in different are in different places. So some of them are actually fairly physically fit. 
others of them, they, they need some work. Uh, so my main goal was to build their strength to kind of burn off some of the excess fat and then worry about had, uh, worry about improving their ACFT sports because they can already all pass the ACFT. Uh, the minimums are pretty, pretty low. Uh, so I guess I guess that's where I, that's the end of my question is uh, how how do I how should I program with that kind of equipment for a group of people that with that with a variance on age and size and physical fitness levels. I like symmetry. For yeah, this. Brent. Brent, you have um you have uh, in your written question it says sixty to ninety minutes with them every day. Is that seven days a week or five days a week? Uh, five days a week. So five days a week you have, and then you said your main goal is make them stronger, build some muscle. Yeah, uh, initially. So I figure if I I can build up, build, get them some muscle on them, and try to burn off some of the excess fat that they've added okay. on over the last couple of years, because the army, with the transition in the program, kind of stopped doing the PT tests and started implementing this, and then COVID, and some people weren't doing PT at all, and it's been pretty gotcha. rough on us for the gotcha. last couple of years. Okay. So the building muscle is going to help with the fat loss. M most of the fat loss is going to happen with diet, which I know you don't have much control over, but if you try mm -hmm. to burn their fat off with the workouts, it's going to be a bit of a, a struggle with, you know, even, even if you did it five days a week. So what the way I would train them is I would do two or three days a week, full body strength training, mm -hmm. and then two days a week of mobility. And the right. way you train multiple people is you set them up um, and you have them, you teach them technique, have them go lighter than they think they need to go. And then you walk through and correct their form and, and be really a good stickler with technique and with form. But I would focus on the compound basic, you know, the basic lifts, deadlifts and squats and overhead presses and bench presses and rows. And I throw some rotation in there, maybe some split stance exercises about mm -hmm. two or three days a week. And then the other days I would use something like maps, prime pro, the and webinar. I would do all the yeah, webinar, yeah. Have, have them follow the webinar. Okay. Yeah. It's like a group yeah. setting. You got the, have you seen the prime pro webinar that I did? Uh, I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen all of it. Okay. So it's free, right? So you can get access to that at primeprowebinar.com and watch that. It's about 50 minutes long. Uh, I think it's per, it's actually what I would teach uh, classes. So I think it's great uh, for every, so no matter what level of mobility you're at, they can literally just follow along. I would literally put it up there or you learn it yourself so you can teach it. It's up to you whether you throw it on a TV and they follow it or, or you learn it yourself and then teach it to them. That's what I would do for the mobility days at Sal saying, I agree the strength. I like symmetry. Only problem with that is he says they don't have dumbbells. Mm. Yeah, just barbells, yeah. hex bars. Uh, yeah, so performance. Yeah, we have, mass performance we have would be good too. Okay, kettlebell. oh, ke kettlebells. Kettlebells. Yeah. You could modify some of it with kettlebells, but I still think anabolic or mass performance, you know, the foundational workouts two or three days a week and then um, on those other days mobility, I think that'd be perfect. Yeah, the only challenge with okay. the group on an anabolic will just be like you you may have people, I don't know where their their level of fitness is at that aren't ready for a barbell back squat yet, for example. And sure. so you might have to modify, right? So maybe somebody, maybe you got some advanced people that have been lifting for a while, they have great technique and you can kind of basically, they can just follow maps anabolic, but then you have somebody else who has terrible squat technique and maybe you modify instead of them doing that, right. they're doing a lunge or something else that's a, a little less risky. And so you might have to do that, right? Because you're teaching in a group setting. Um, that's the only thing, the tip that I would give is those those high technique exercises like squatting and deadlifting in particular. Um, you may modify them for the people that aren't quite at that level to where you could like just tell them yeah. to squat and walk away. Yeah, right? you could go like instead, right. of a, instead of a squat, you could do like a split stance exercise or like walking lunges. And then instead of a straight bar deadlift, you could do a hex bar deadlift, which is, uh, you know, requires less skill. Um, so you could throw those modifications in there, but yeah, five days a week, you know, three days, two to three days of full body strength training, and then two to three days of, 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 you know, correctional mobility type work. You've got yourself a really good routine and they're going to feel good as they do it. And they will build muscle mm -hmm. and they will build strength. That'll help with the fat loss as they start to speed up their metabolism. But I mean, I mean, I'll be honest with you that the fat loss, a lot of it's going to be when they're not with you, right? Their diet. Um, so right. you're in the military, so you can beat them up a little bit and tell them, <laughs> call them fat yeah. or whatever. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys are allowed to do that anymore. Uh, but uh, it, it's frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. What the hell's going on I, here? I, yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to work with them with their nutrition. Also, I mean, I've learned a lot from it. I, I was already a nutritionist, but NCI oh, has helped with the actual application. So perfect. Sweet. I'm going to work with them. I'm definitely working with them with that. Okay, Brent. And yeah. then I. I do have anabolic, so I was going to, I wasn't sure about how to program it into how to modify it into a group setting. I mean, the first, the first and second phase are pretty easy, but once you get to the third phase, the rest periods are so short, it's kind of hard to 
get everybody through with that rest period. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can keep them longer and you can also go phase one, phase two, phase one, phase two. And then I would go mass performance. Do you have that program? No, I do not. I'll send that to you, Brent, because mass, mass performance is great. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yep. no problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yep. No, thank you. Yeah, group strength training is really hard. Very hard. Yeah, I know, Justin, you do it with your, with your football players. It's, hard. it's It's a tough one, man. I mean, it gets away from you really quickly. And it's... I mean, for me, it's about slowing it down and like really trying to like apply things like isometric so I can at least like make sure everybody gets the concept of how to brace properly, mm -hmm. how to hold certain positions. But really at that point, like you have to kind of uh, trust that they're going to apply the exercise with appropriate form. Yeah, totally. Because um, otherwise you're, everybody's doing strength training. You're watching this guy over here, that guy over there, <laughs> that girl over there, they're doing it wrong. Yep. You start to get injuries and it's stuff tough. like that. Well, so and here's like an that. example of where, I mean, we always talk about how, you know, how important squatting and deadlifting is, and it is. And and if I had each one of those people individually, I would be working on all of them getting great at those movements. But if I'm forced to teach in a class setting. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why I said, you know, like uh, walking lunge and yeah, a trap bar. I'm going to look, I'm going to look at my, my 20, you know, 20 pilots or whatever, and soldiers. I'm going to go, or soldiers and go, hey, uh, you know, these five have great squat mechanics and deadlift mechanics. So you guys can follow anabolic accordingly. Then these other ones that are like all over the board, I don't have the time to coach each individual up. So it's like, you're going to do a lunge. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, exactly. And I had to look too at like, which one had the most, um, <clears throat> least risk uh, in, you know, it was, had the most like benefit to them too. Yeah. So like a trap bar deadlift versus like regular deadlift. Like, I don't have that much time to coach all those cues and get everybody on the same page. So I would, prefer them to just do that and still get the benefit of it, but like lower the risk factors down. Yeah. Perfect. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. <laughs> 